Like we can see, like most of the countries, developing countries, they are still trying to get your literacy rate high. Getting education is very important thing for everyone. And particularly that helps themselves, the groups like the nearby people, even the whole community in that area and the country. In developed countries, the literacy rate is always about 95, 96, something like that. But whereas in many areas, in certain regions, in several areas, in rurals, there are plenty of places where because of that area, the whole country literacy rate goes down. And uh, I've seen that the education awareness is very low in that particular area. And that's the reason why I've started this tour of data awareness, which also helps them to educate. So in terms of education, coaching, self-learning, exams, training, and success, this is actually everything step-by-step -step process. So we don't study like an education. It's not just about education like what we have. We know that we have to do here. Basically, I'm from UK. My kids are studying there. The basic rule is like any kids under 16, they have to go to this school. If not, there's a hefty fine and even imprisonment is also possible for the parents. So they, they do that. 99.1 percentage literacy rate in UK. But what about other countries? And also this education, they give more flexibility. Some of the good information like homeschooling. Has anyone heard about homeschooling? Even in that area, that type of environment in UK, they still claim that it's okay if you don't send your kids to the school, but you need to show me a proof on one thing. Do you do homeschooling? Or you're covering all the subjects? And you need to be part of homeschooling community in your local area. Right? So you, that is on another side. In America, there is one place where they also promote homeschooling. And one parent was questioned like, are oh, you actually educating your kids? They said yes. They were trying to verify what are the subjects they are covering. They covered and they found that there is one education was missing and the parents were checked immediately. Because they thought like it's just the age of six or seven, sex education is not a necessary one. But unfortunately that became a very bad thing. There. So it's very important for even educated parents to know what they need to train and educate for their kids. Coaching. So it's not just about the education and also the coaching. Separate coach, just dedicated for one particular subject. And self-learning. You as a member, you learn from yourself and also you try to learn from your peer networks and from your lecturers or anyone outside us. You write your exams on now CPT, computer-based training and computer-based exams. After you are employed, you will get additional training to qualify and to do your work. Say for example, now you have done your uh, computer networks or database programming, database development, and you become a DBA or database developer, so that's not sufficient enough for you to get a proper job in a corporate environment. You definitely need to do some kind of certification. So we'll be covering that certification area in Microsoft platform, what, what you can do for the database administration and for database developments and what are the levels of certifications that you can have, which will really help you if you have that on your CVs. Okay, So that sort of trainings are still possible and available even after you get a job or even to get a first-time job. And you will definitely succeed after you follow all of these processes and procedures. I'll make this quick because uh, the awareness, like in developed countries, we always have this. There are certain things that may not be there and could be missing. You can see in some of these countries, like in Africa, Nigeria, and many areas, you have the poverty. If the education is made mandatory, then we can avoid all of these situations. It saves children's lives and avoids illiteracy. It promotes girls and women's rights. In most of the countries, like it, it definitely needs to happen. And the recent incidents that would be had in different few other countries, like in India, like a few accidents, many things that really shattered the whole world. The kids grow up healthier because they need to know what needs to be fed and what kind of information that they need to process. It also helps boost economic growth for the country. Once you have a good life, and like once you have good education, you'll have better life and uh, provide more opportunities for you. I'm just gonna try to zoom this up.
How many of you know Satya Nadella? Sorry? Yeah, CEO of Microsoft. So he's the current CEO of Microsoft. Do you know how much he earned? This was converted like uh, 7.5 crore rupees. So others, they actually get from 0.9 million to 1.9 million dollars. This salary of ITC was is one from one Indian, but uh, is based in America for Microsoft. Whereas others, other IT companies are based in India only. So they lead the most. But in, in terms of IT, in terms of the salaries, CEOs, whatever they get, it's not just only them, but also anyone in the senior management level, they do get the same privileges and many number of things. So you can clearly see here, I'm not saying that you have to be IT tech to be in this ladder, but whatever you do, the education is a very important thing, which helps everyone to be very successful, and you can help others, that's a very important thing. So that makes you the member of society, uh, like you'll be recognized, they know who you are. It identifies the difference, like you can identify the clear difference between work, life and curriculum. You know what you're talking, you know what you're speaking, you know what you're doing in your day to day life, what you're advising, what you want your kids to be, what your friends. You can really advise them a lot. It, it's a simple technology like the research and methodology. So you would, what you do is you first analyze, you design, develop, implement. For any problems after implementation, again you analyze the problems and again you do. It's a life cycle. It's not only for product developments and product life cycle developments, but also applies to your day-to-day -day education life. And it also helps you to be an independent guy. Wherever you go, you can survive. Without education, can you go to any place? Can you see yourself in a place where you can have a very good life? Education really helps you a lot. If you take in my terms, like uh, to survive within IT, I do not have much options, opportunities at the time. So I have to keep updating my knowledge. Unfortunately, that was another part, but I have to get at least 15 diplomas for now. I've got two master degrees, one PhD. So I have to keep upgrading myself to be in a position that I'm, I'm in still in IT. Plus, I'm educated. Plus, I'm going around and trying to explain things better so that others can also do the same thing for others. Share and help. Like I said, you can share and you can help others. There are many people who does that even now. Can anyone raise your hands that you are trying to help or sharing your knowledge to any of your peer network? Good. I appreciate it. Can I give a clap to this person? What's your name? Bhuvaneshwar. Please clap. That also helps you for a career. If you see this checklist, do you think is that possible? Do you think that's possible to keep the stones? It keeps the stability in our life. It's like what you said in your mind. And with education, we can see the fear, doubt, critics, negativity, what everyone, others speak about you. You need to ensure that that goes down. You're not really letting that happen. And once you have your confidence, that's a green tick mark going up always. Makes more sense? Okay, so we'll just jump on to the social awareness one. You see the tree, like, what do you see in that one? That's a very nice picture. You can see a tree, it's got good roots, more people, social. So it's not just only you, you have to think about the other surroundings. We have four basic things, rules, individual, group, and social issues. The main thing what we need to say to everyone, like no child labor at all, wherever you see, please strongly condemn them. It's really a very must thing. Please be so against with these type of things, wherever you see. Not only this country, wherever you travel to, please do that. And say yes to education. That helps their future, helps their surroundings as well. As an individual, what you can do, I'm not saying you have to do all of these, but that will really help. As an individual, you still can do many things. 
So it's saving animals, extend hand for health, self-awareness, help aged people, plantation, educate others. How many of you in your schools or colleges that you're doing it deep already? <coughs> something, one of these ones. Good, good, good. Three of you. So I'm sure you would have had the uh, social services thing, like national social services scheme. You had in your schools or colleges? Yep, so you participated in that, you went for plantation and many things. That's good. As a group, what better you can do? So the social awareness. You can change the world. You need to have self-responsibility. These photos are all actually very specific to Malaysia. It's really happening. And a blood donation, save the country. How many of you would clap or would appreciate your friend that they are taking part in this one? Do you know anyone doing this? Your friends, family? Did that really help you to do the same thing from your side? Did you think that you need to do at least once in your lifetime? Yes. Good. <coughs> what are the social issues we have? Abusing, saying no to women's education, corruption, public nuisance. I'm sorry to say that, but still I'm just trying to take the local information to give the local people only. The photos are again from Malaysia. I'm not saying that it is not 100% clean, 100% neat and tidying up things out, but it is there all parts of the world, in different locations, different locality, in different areas. It becomes our own responsibility to keep our area surroundings clean, clear, and take responsibility, at least try to take some actions from your side to help your surroundings. Okay, so we move on to data awareness. That was a quick thing about education and social. We're going to see day to day life data, facts about Malaysia, data revolution, <coughs> data storage equipment. Day to day life data. I'm just going to move forward to the next section. Can any of any one of you say what a data is, or can ex can anyone explain how a data can be, where you can grab it from? As simple data. You can see information, records, and facts here, which will talk about the daily life data. You wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. How many of you wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning? One person. Good. How many of you exercise at all? Two. College, 9 to 6. Probably 9 to different timings. Yeah. Relaxing at 7. Two. Studying at eight. Two. Sleeping at ten. <laughs> so does that mean that those who do not raise your hands, you don't do it? You don't follow this? You do do that, but you don't know what you're doing. That's the awareness what I'm trying to bring here. So when I ask the first question, wake up at six, one person raise their hands, I can give a quick information about one person wakes up at six. What about others? They wake up after six. A simple data. You collect data from your day to day life data. How many of you follow this life cycle? Do you have a return timetable in your life that you have to follow these things, certain things? Or when you're trying to learn for your subjects, when I was trying to do my PhD, like it was like too much hefty things, it really killed me a lot. And uh, I have to schedule many things, I have to create new timetables on a weekly basis, I have to write down here, wherever I go, and I don't have much time. So what I have to do, I have to record things in the tape or the CD, and then I play it whenever I drive. So I read, I hear what I write. So I keep doing that one. That saves my time. Right? So it's the same data. Instead of reading, I'm trying to view it in a different format, but right? helps saving my time. So I analyzed. So the data awareness helps you to analyze what you can best do to save your time and to make yourself feel much potential. End of the day, what you see is we breathe data, we work with data, we eat data. How many of you agree this? None? One? Two, three? We eat data. Okay, what time did you eat this morning? What time did you have your breakfast? Sorry? You've had chapati, but my question was what time? 
8. What time you had your breakfast last Tuesday? You can't say that. But the information, the data, what you have with you is very fresh just for today. Probably for yesterday, not for the last week or the previous week or the last year. You can't do it. But how do you organize this? How do you store this? If I ask that information, all of you give one, one information, like you had your breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning or 7.30, I have to collect them all, put that together. If I do that every time, wherever I go, that becomes a big database. I need to organize the data. Right? We work with data. Like I said, we, every day we work with data. How many of you know that the program begins at 9 o'clock? How many of you were here before 9 o'clock? I'm not taunting. But it's the data what we work with. We know that some information, like something is happening at this time, that's the data what you have in your mind. When you fail to analyze your things, you fail in whatever you do. So you need to organize yourself. Everything, whatever you do, you're trying to pursue. When you have your exams, which is three hours long, you need to ensure that by seeing the question papers, you need to analyze. There are many sections which you can separate to say that this section has to be taken at least 30 minutes, one hour, another one hour, another 30 minutes, so you cover the three hours. Yeah? So you have to analyze. Pre-planning is a very important thing for us. So this is some of the information about Malaysia, where you can see country, area, population, male, female, languages, capital, currency, literacy rate. So the interest rate in Malaysia is 93.1 percentage according to 2010 census. How many of you do think that you need to have 99 percent or 100 percent of interest rate? Two, three. You could be potentially working with U.S. Kilman in the future when, when I'm trying to do more data analysis program in uh, forthcoming months. I'm trying to do that um, probably every month in rural areas. We just need to bring in awareness. That awareness bringing like uh, data definitely give education as well. Because when they start realizing this, that really improves the logics, mechanisms, algorithms, whatever they, they calculate in their mind is much helpful. 